Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Classroom 2.0 Live. We're so glad that you've joined us today. My name is Kim Case, and I'm pleased to co-host today with Peggy George. Our other co-host, Lorna Costantini, has a family uh, situation that she's having that she's taking care of today so she won't be with us but she uh, will be listening to the recording and so we wish her the best and we want to welcome you as well as our two special guests today Kimberly Slack and Joanne Henning and they're going to be talking about Mission US and explaining exactly what that is and ways that you can use this with your students. How many are brand new to illuminate into our our show today? If you could uh, click the smiling face to let me know. Great. Thank you very much. I'm just going to quickly go over the illuminate platform. If you are looking on the whiteboard, just below the participants window are some emoticons. And there is a pan with the blue um, or with a green up arrow. You can click on that if you want to ask a question during the question and answer time. I will be pulling questions out of the chat throughout the session and asking those. Um, you can either use your mic during the question and answer time, or you can continue to type your questions and comments in the chat. We have some polling features here, the green check and red X that we'll be using. And when you need to step away, you can click on the blue door to let us know you're not at your computer. That's not how you exit the session at the end to process the recording. You click on the X, or you can go to File, Quit, and on a Mac, you click on the uh, Eliminate Live and go to Quit the Session. This is the chat window here. And when you're going to send a message, you just type it in here, click Send. And make sure it says to this room here in this drop down arrow. If you wanted to send a private message to the moderators or to a specific person, you can change the drop down arrow um, to signify who you're going to send that to. And the moderators see all messages, including private messages. Uh, so you might want to limit that so our guest speakers aren't distracted. If you're going to use your mic, we recommend that you have a USB headset and to activate your mic during the question and answer time you'll click on the talk button and then when you're finished you'll click on the talk button to release the mic back to the room. These are our whiteboard tools and we're going to be using the laser pointer which is the blue wand and with the red starburst at the end. Normally we have um, closed captioning text offered throughout the session. So if you or your colleagues are um, hearing impaired or English is not your first language, you can usually view the caption that's done by Tammy Moore, but she's not with us today. She also has a family commitment. But let your colleagues know that most of the time we do have that available, and we're very appreciative of Tammy donating her time each week to help us with that. In order to view the chat better and things go really quickly, you might want to change your layout to the wide layout. And to do so, you click on View at the top, select Layout, and then choose the wide layout. And then that puts the chat in a separate column in the middle um, so that you can see the chat when it starts flowing very quickly. That is your preference, and it affects only your computer. So you can adjust that as you see fit. We also, if there's application sharing, you may want to scale to fit your your window so that you can see the entire window instead of just a portion during the app sharing. And to do so, you might want, you'll click on Tools at the top, then Application Sharing, and then select Scale to Fit, and then that will help you be able to see more of the application sharing if that's done. And all of our sessions are archived and recorded, and we post them on the Archives and Resources tab on the 
our website at live.classroom20.com, as well as all of the resources that are shared throughout the session. We put them in a live binder, and we'll be sharing that live binder throughout the session as well. And then after the show, we go in and add additional links that were shared by our participants throughout the session. So we encourage you to check out the archives and resources page from each and every session. And we uh, there's also a calendar to let you know about upcoming events. And right now, it, we'd like to know where you're joining us from today. So if you could click on the laser pointer, which is the blue one just about right here, and then click to show your location on the world map. We're so glad that you have joined us wherever you're tuning in from. Seeing lots of places in the United States, over in Australia, and we're grateful for all of our faithful attendees as well as our new participants that have joined today, as well as our special guests, Kimberly Flack and Joanne Annie. Thank you so much for letting us know where you're tuning in from today. We're going to go ahead now and go on to our polling questions. And the first question is, do you teach American history or U.S. history in your classroom? If you do, please click the green check. And if you do not, click the red X. This will give our guests some background into the content area that our participants teach in their classrooms. Give everybody a bit more time, a green check if you do, a red X if you do not, and the polling features are just below the participants window. Let me go ahead and get those results for us. And it looks like about 55% do not and about 17% do teach U.S. or American history. And I think you'll find the game applicable and interesting uh, regardless of the content area that you teach. Okay, let's go on to our second polling question is, are you familiar with Mission U.S.? If you're familiar with it, please click the green check. And if you are not, and this is new to you, click the red X. All right, let me go ahead and get those results for us. And it looks like it's an overwhelming 61% are not familiar, and 23% are. And I am confident that you will find this amazing. And let's go ahead and go on to the next polling question. Do you use learning games and simulations in your classroom? If you do, please click the green check. And if you do not, click the red X. Or if you're not in the classroom, you can also click the red X. Okay, let me go ahead and get those results for us. And it looks like about 23% do not use the learning uh, act games in their classroom or they're not in the classroom, and about 58% do, and that's a great majority. And I'm sure you'll be adding this to your repertoire. Right now, we would like to do a final polling question, and this one you're going to put in your chat. And you'll also be using the whiteboard as well. And we ask that you click on the text tool, which is the large letter A, and then type your answer on the whiteboard. And you're going to be answering the question, can you name an online game that integrates video and primary sources? If you can, if you're familiar with something that's similar, to this type of learning activity, then go ahead and click on the A and type your answer on the whiteboard. 
I'm not sure that I can think of any offhand, but you might be able to um, for a learning game that allows you to view video clips as well as primary sources. So go ahead and take a stab at it. I know I'm kind of drawing a blank. There's one about elections. There we go. I forgot to enable the whiteboard tool, so that makes a big difference. <laughs> so now you have the opportunity to be able to type on the whiteboard. And Tom, we're still going to call on you regardless. <laughs> Lots of things, yes, going on through Discovery Education. Oh, yes, Urge and Evoke. Library of Congress. The Interactive Atlas and Smithsonian Resources. Absolutely, these are all some great things. I know there are some um, historical uh places in Second Life where you can experience these things, including, uh, I see, PBS and Google Lit Trips. So thank you so much for sharing these with us, kind of whetting our appetite for today's session about Mission U.S. and our very special guests, Joanne and Kimberly Flack. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Peggy who is going to introduce our special guest to you today. I am thrilled to be able to introduce our special guest today because they just happen to be from Arizona. And some of you may remember Kimberly Flack because she did one of our earlier shows about the Frontline Digital Nation um, um, program that was ongoing and, and still is and has amazing resources for um, educators. Kim has been in the education field for over 20 years in Arizona, and she's the Associate General Manager for Education for Arizona PBS Channel 8. And in that role, she coordinates all of the professional development and community efforts. So she reaches out to people everywhere, not just in Arizona, but around the U.S. And they provide both face-to-face -face and online professional development. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Kim also is one of those incredible educators who won the ISTE Making It Happen Pink Jacket Award for Arizona. So we're so proud to have her joining us today. And Joanne Henning is a wonderful friend of mine who is a fourth grade teacher, has been for at least 14 years. And she came into technology a little reluctantly by her great friend, Kim Thomas, who's also in the room today. And she took off. So she has been using technology in her classroom ever since then. And I am so excited to have her sharing with us today because Joanne Henning was selected as the Arizona Educator of the Year for Mission U.S. because of the things she has done with it in her classroom. So today, Joanne is going to be sharing some of those things that she does in her classroom. And Kim is going to be telling us a little bit of the background about um, Mission U.S. and what those wonderful resources are. So I know that they'll be able to add a little bit more to their background and intro. So I am going to just turn this over to them with our newbie question. And you know that our newbie question is designed to be something that gives us all a little bit of background about the topic. And when I first learned about Mission U.S., I saw that it said it's a non-broadcast game, 
but it uses the internet. And I thought, I need to know what that means. So I'm going to turn this over to Kim, who's going to tell us what it does mean to be a non-broadcast game that uses the internet. Welcome, Kim and Joanna. Thanks, Peggy. We are really excited and so proud of Joe. And we really appreciate the other Kim in Arizona for um, being the power moving force behind um, Joe and helping her uh, get started because um, we just know Joe does amazing things in her classroom that she's going to tell you about today. So I'm going to take just a really uh, short amount of time to give you the background behind Mission US and get you all surfing the web um, to see how you can be implementing it and have Joe share the best practices and why she was selected here in Arizona as our Arizona Mission U.S. Teacher of the Year. And I'll let you know that there were other Mission U.S. Teachers of the Year um, across some other states, and we will get you looking for them and see if there was one in your state. But the newbie question um, will get you thinking about uh, why PBS decided to invest dollars in producing something that never made it to television. And we were so excited because um, you know with digital natives that they don't necessarily turn on a television anymore, that they watch TV on all different kinds of devices. And they look at their parents and their grandparents and wonder why in the world does something have to be looked at on a giant screen? Maybe those are just for movies. I think it should be able to go with me anywhere. And so they invested a lot of dollars in creating something that could be put on a computer and specifically for middle school students and that became Mission US. So that is what um, non-broadcast meant and that was something new for producers and it came from our PBS partner 13. WNET and thank you Peggy. Um, Mission US, it has a hyphen in the middle of it so it's kind of a funky URL but people don't seem to have. Um, <laughs> yes um, and you know I have to just mention about Congress. We are very um, proud of them and I have to say we're very proud of the American people. I was just back in DC for a week um, and Congress actually said please um, let the people know that we've had more calls about this than even health care. Um, we know that the people want PBS more than anything. So um, yay, yay, yay. They, they heard the message loud and clear that um, it needs to stay in the budget. And it's actually um, one small commercial. It's less than one dollar per household in America per year is what it is out of the a national budget. So, okay, onward. Um, anyway, it's the first of its kind from PBS, and it was really created just for middle school students and teachers. But in my work in Arizona, and I think with my partners across the United States, we have found that um, it can be used across other grade bands. And so, if you're here from other grade levels and subject areas, I'd encourage you to think creatively about how to use it. Um, and it's internet based, but it's downloadable. So if you don't always have access to the internet, I'd encourage you to look into how you can download it. And I'm going to give you a web tour in about uh, 20 seconds or less to show you how to do that. It's research based, but before we do a little bit of research, I want to give you a web tour that is a little more exciting than me talking about research. So let me launch that and paste in my URL and I will also put this in chat. Oops. It is the year fast. 1770. You left your family farm at age 14 to become an apprentice in Boston. Oh, you, Trouble is brewing there. Halt! State your business. The tension between soldiers and citizens is growing, becoming intolerable. Do you support the views of the Patriots, or are you loyal to the Crown? Take a stand. Play Mission U.S. Online, a revolutionary way to learn history.
It's pretty short and sweet. I'm going to go back and launch um, the other address, um, Mission US. If I can type and talk at the same time, I'm sorry. And I can't. I can't do webinars and type and talk at the same time. It's just a disability I have. I do much better copying, cutting, and pasting. There we go. So that was a really quick. <laughs> I know my multitasking um, was left on a plane, <laughs> I think, when I was traveling. So um, that was a really quick demo. It was um, 30 seconds of, uh, of just a really quick intro, and I wanted to show you where that came from. This is the home page for Mission US. It is free. It's a free game from PBS. You can find it probably from going to PBS Kids, PBS Kids Go, and PBS.org, but it has its own URL, so I wanted to make sure you all had it. And the demo, the 30-second demo that I just gave you, came from the very bottom lower right-hand corner right here. Everything that I am showing you today will be from this website, and it has a wonderful demo that you can use. You'll notice the word free many, many times over on here. You will also notice that you can register to play. That's an important thing because it will allow you to create an account. It will then allow you to have student accounts, and it will remember your student accounts and keep track of your progress as you work through the game. That's important also. And Joe will allow you to have more details of working through um, the game and, and the ins and outs of all of that. But let me uh, get, get to some very specifics um, about the background behind the game and share with you why we found it so powerful and compelling and how you can convince um, anyone to include it in the curriculum because we know that there's some specifics of why it should be included in your curriculum. Behind the teachers button at the top, there's a classroom guide. And when I'm doing the training and I don't have Joe with me at hand, I often show this video, but we have Joe today in person. And so we don't need her, but you can um, look at that video more in depth to see a wonderful example. Um, there's some great research behind it. They did um, pilot studies, and we were considered a study behind um, as an advanced larger piece. Uh, they did ask us some, some anecdotal questions about our rollout, but it was nothing um, like what they did more in depth for the research. And so my slide here, oh, I'm sorry, you can't see the, you can't see the web tour? Okay. Um, it looks like someone else is going to launch it for me. Okay, I'm going to put um, a new link in, so maybe someone can launch this for me. Okay, here is um, related to the research. This is some quotes from the pilot study, um, and basically it just said that students who were struggling benefited, um, struggling readers benefited from using Mission US. Um, Students were more intellectually and emotionally engaged. Uh, there were wonderful, um, there were just very good results that came from the research. Um, students were technically engaged. 
they were more interested in U.S. history, and they felt like it was more applicable to them. I can tell you that it was used as a supplement. It was used um, as um, an addition to something that they did at home, outside of school, and then it was used as a replacement for what they were normally doing uh, with textbooks. So it was used in all sorts of ways to um, replace or uh, supplement what they were doing with U.S. history. And those are things that you can all find behind the teacher's area within within um, that area, and it's noted under pilot study on the teacher's area. But the best piece of research, I think, is that the classroom of students in one research group actually asked the researchers for their autographs. And that is my favorite anecdotal piece of all of the research. Um, they just loved the game so much that they wanted the researchers to autograph their work. And why did they like it so very much? Well, um, the teacher's guide will provide all sorts of pieces for you, but I think it's because not only are there online and engaging stories, and you're going to hear of those pieces from Joe, but there's also interactive lessons that include writing activities and debates. There's a lot of things that take you away from the screen as well. And every time you go back to the screen, it involves different kinds of activities that will give you different endings. So. Within the Boston Massacre, for example, there will be different endings. There's different things to click on and different choices to be made. So it doesn't necessarily have the same ending every time you play. Everything inside the game is tied to the National Education Standards. And again, I'm right there within the teacher URL. Um, from that same link, mission-us.org, um, under teachers, and you can go and you can print them off in PDF or doc if you need to attach them to something for an administrator. You'll see it's about halfway down the page. It's tied to national education standards. This is just an example of one of the units, well, two of the units actually, inside. Um, and I chose a couple of the introductory ones because I believe Joe is going to share with you a different example. It shows you some of the playing time, um, and it shows you how long the, uh, the story is that takes place, and it's what's happening within it, and it will also um, give you an example of what's going on. and some of the questions. And then it will also show you what concepts are being targeted, as well as the types of classroom activities. And one of the things that I didn't share with you, um, and I should probably, oh, absolutely, one of the questions is um, in chat going past that I just saw fly past was, can I link it to my website? Absolutely. Um, you can link right to it and have students um, go to it from the website. Uh, and one of the benefits to having it be web-based um, is that um, you can uh, pace it for students that way. Um, but there's primary sources embedded in each of in each of the lessons that students go through. And so there's document-based activities. You can go deep into those. And the writing prompts um, take it across the curriculum, as well as all sorts of vocabulary. And you can get to those primary sources right there within the game. And so that was one of the reasons why we put that whiteboard activity question up there for you, is they're going in and actually handling the primary sources directly. And I'm going to very quickly put up the home, um, a web tour for you one more time.
and I'll put the URL in chat for you. And tell me if this is working and if you can see it. I wanted you to have a chance to see the primary sources that are available for you, oh good, to, to be able to download. Um, I just find this amazing. And this, um, if this is the only piece of the whole game um, that you can find valuable um, is this collection. This to me alone is, is huge within the game. So all of these then are available in document form and PDF. And keep in mind that this is just the first mission within Mission US. So where else would you get students to look at Thomas Paine's Common Sense from 1776? and actually have a chance to get their hands on it and look at it in document form. Okay. The vocabulary is right here. There's lyrics to songs. You can even have them play a game called Penny Whistle Hero. I'm still waiting next time I see Jo. I want to have um, her tell me what her score is on Penny Whistle Hero. It's supposed to be like the 1776 version of um, Guitar Hero. But for now, I'm turning it over to her because we were so proud of her and her amazing work that it's her turn to talk and my turn to turn off my mic. <laughs> I've got my penny whistle player going in the background here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joanne Henning, and I'd like to share with you what I did with um, the Mission US. Um, I had a fourth grade classroom and um, four or five combo this year, and this was my first year teaching fifth grade curriculum. And um, when I went to the PBS workshop in October, um, I found this valuable resource that I just had to plug into my class. I um, was so excited when I saw what they had to offer. The PBS workshop was amazing. It was back in October at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism. The gentleman that had created the program gave us this great overview a beautiful binder with all of the resources in a hard copy form. And they let us go through a module. It was so much fun and the light bulbs just went off left and right about how to use this in my classroom. I took it back to my class and I started it in my after school um, technology club. It was a combination four or five group that, of kids that chose to stay after school, chose to explore different websites and different ways to um, improve their learning through technology. Um, they were so excited to use this. My fourth graders especially were just thrilled about what they were learning and the interactivity of the game. Um, I asked the kids if they would be interesting, interested in teaching the other students how to play this class, how to play this game, and they so stepped up. So to make it a little bit more interesting, I had them dress up. Only three of the volunteers, a little bit more outgoing ones, volunteered to do this. But um, once they got going, everybody else in the after school class stepped up. And they said, no, no, not, not, okay, now show them this, now, no, now do this. So even though they didn't volunteer to teach, everybody was teaching from the sidelines, so to speak. There's my student presenters. Um, got two of them to volunteer to dress up in, in period costumes, so to speak. A little bit shy, but once they got into it, you could tell they were very, very, very excited. If you go into my voice thread, this is an active link that shows how my kids were just riveted when I was um, presenting the initial information. 
um, the panning on this was, was just amazing. They were fascinated. Um, my classroom is set up with, um, let's see, a laptop card of eight. Um, I've got four desktops plus my laptop plus my, my desktop, teacher desktop. And with 26 kids, one of the issues I kind of had was how to get everybody involved. Set up a listening center. I had some ongoing activities that as they played, this was their checkpoint, that they couldn't you know, leave the room, they took it out the door, was they had to show me evidence of their learning. We were on the floor with laptops. We were sharing laptops. We had set up um, listening centers with laptops. But the most important thing is my after-school kids were facilitating the learning. They were doing the teaching in groups. There's Juan down in the lower right-hand corner. He was one of my fourth graders. And um, he was kind of running the show. And every so often I had to say, Juan, let, let somebody else play. Juan, let somebody else play. Um, that's Stacy in the upper left-hand corner. She was. She was driving my desktop that integrates with the smart board, um, doing the teaching from the back of the room. They were so excited to share with the regular class. I asked them, would you guys be willing to share with um, another fifth grade class? So we invited another classroom into our room. On the floor, kids all over the place. My little present presenters with their period costumes on were up front sharing everything they had done with this other classroom. So they really had come out of their shell to be able to speak in front of another class. There's my wand again up in front of the smart board, talking his way through, well, this is what we did. This is how you go here. This is how you do this. I just stood in the back of the room and just smiled, asked a few questions. And it was so much fun to watch these kids share what they learned. Valerie took a turn, too. And as my final slide says, I, I hope to go back now that Ames is over. I have to hope to go back to the other fifth grade teachers and say, can I send some kids in to give you a hand to be able to access this program? Um, again, I'm hoping my three teachers will do it. My three student teachers will do it. And I can just kind of step back and um, watch them learn as independent learners. Um, I could just add this game, in, and thank you, Joe. I mean, your example, and I love the fact that you guys even taught another class. Oh, do you want to play your voice thread link in a web tour, Joe? Yeah, um, Peggy, I think you've got that. Can you boot that up, please? Give me a minute, we can get it. OK. And while she's looking for it, I'll just share. Um, oh, go ahead, Peggy. The difference between this game and I don't know how soon it'll, talk, it'll start for you all. Um, the difference between this and, and other interactive games is that you can return to this over and over. And this is actually a story. Hi, my and name is so Joanne Henning. You I'd go like to in share what my fourth and, and out, fifth graders did with um, Mission U.S. And 13 in our classroom. It's actually a story. Um, and you're making decisions. And so you're going into a scene. Uh, and it's, it's literally. Um, as First if you're a part US, of the revolution, and so you're, here in it's playing they out teach um, at the Walter like School it's Children's a, it's a video. Um, you're you're there. You're in the commons. You're about to enter into a battle, it was a very and so what's going to happen? How do you make this decision? The US was a and interactive program and what do what do we need to do and next? Effects, and so where should I click? What decision should I make? And depending on what decision you make, um, this this or this happens. It's very similar to. Um, 
the choose your own ending book. And we started what I really liked is the fact class. that kids would go home after school and come back the next um, day with, I got this fine, go I here, this program, is what happened. Really and so the interaction that wasn't even it. part of the learning was pretty cool to see too. I also had kids that would go back and replay and choose different paths to find out what the ending would be. Internet. I know how to do this. I logged on to many, many things. Now do nothing right here. Not. Okay. What can I use it in? Plant. Do not do nothing right this. here. Okay. What do you do now? Go on player. My favorite part is when I got to go grocery shopping for Mrs. Eads and then I went to go wander around and just pick up stuff from from Mrs. Eads spinning people I couldn't pick Even my reluctant students weren't, weren't afraid to um, express their learning when they were on voice thread. It was a little less threatening than being in front of a, a, a class. So even though they might not have gotten up in front of the class, they were really willing to speak at VoiceThread. And my favorite part was when I got to go grocery shopping for Mrs. Eats. I was a little nervous representing in front of all the students because there was so much people but I had a friend named Stacy, which is right next to me, who dressed up as one of the characters, similar to Mrs. Eads, and I felt much more comfortable with her next to me by her side, by my side. I was they might not have been the lucky speakers, speakers, but they were but very soft my speakers. My friend Juan was, was dressed up like Nathaniel. I was totally amazed by the student engagement when we presented this up on the smart board. Every single student in my class was absolutely riveted to hear about Nat's story. The farm would have gone to my oldest brother, Christopher, but he ran off to fight against the French. We haven't heard from him in ten years. Today, I leave my family to move to Boston. I'm going to learn how to be a printer. And they're watching down the smartboard. If I'm a successful apprentice, someday I'll become a master printer with my own shop. I'm not successful. Mission US is an interesting website to learn more about the American Revolution. One of my favorite parts from the game was when I got to go grocery shopping for Mrs. Eads. It was very fun and I learned I had to avoid importers. Okay, tell them what the, tell me what they are. Uh, not words, friendship, so when you, when somebody teaches you how to do something without getting paid and you're trying to just give you a phone. What's the other ones? Uh, I haven't gotten any of this. Okay, so what's the one you do know really well now? Apprentice, very nice. I was a little worried when we didn't have one-to-one -one computers in the classroom. However, my kids were very accommodating as far as sharing computers, sharing programs. Um, we had a listening center going. We utilized every bit of technology that was available to us to make Mission US a success in our classroom. Part one, I liked it because Nathaniel had to go 
sell so advertisements, but he couldn't sell it to the um, people that didn't like the teaching my class how to do mission your ass it was fun being a teacher. Once my students started playing the game in the classroom they were very eager to share with the other fifth grade classes in school. Um, we did have a few time constraints because we started the program right before winter break. However, we did have time to invite a fifth grade class into our room and we modeled and shared the program on the smart board. The other teacher was extremely interested and excited to be able to incorporate this wonderful resource into her teaching. Even though I felt like a dork wearing the hat and the vest, I after I started teaching, I felt like I felt like I was having fun. Okay. So what part are you on, Juan? Part three. And what's your objective for part three? Barely started. What was your objective for part two? What did you have to collect in part two? Um, we had to like go to stores and buy tea and stuff. And you needed to make sure the tea wasn't from where? Imported. Imported from where? From, no, from Britain. Okay, because they're boycotting the British tea. Nice. We had so much fun with this program, this game. The kids were just off the charts excited. I wanted to just share with you um, a couple other links before uh, we close out the show. And I wanted to thank Jo um, for all of her hard work with this project. I know. She continues to be such a leader with this. And there's another mission coming. Um, mission US is actually going to grow into several missions. So um, we're excited to see what will come down the line. And there is a hint of mission two. It will be launching this fall. But I'm hopeful that we will hear more from them at ISTE. And so let me um, share with you this URL first, launching in a web tour, because <laughs> I know I, that, um, that owl poop, I've just never heard that um, saying before. Um, I want you to see this chart, because I think this sums up the game very well. And you will probably want to zoom in and make this web tour um, window a little bigger. Oops. Thanks, Kim Chase. I was doing that uh, as you were. I think this is a fantastic chart that shows what the students can do in the game, what teachers and students can do together, and then all the curriculum materials. It sums up everything everyone can do across 
uh, the whole package all together, um, what they're doing and what Joe was doing in her classroom um, and with her after school students um, in her technology club and then when she was bringing everyone together. It, it just is an incredible package and it's so much more than just a game as we think of gaming. Um, so it's so much more than that. And they're thinking critically and they're doing writing prompts and they're practicing um, literacy terms and they're reviewing events and they're diving into primary sources and they're encountering um, historical figures from firsthand experience and it just goes on and on and on and on. And so um, you saw how extensive that list was with primary sources and that alone, if that alone doesn't get you and what your appetite to dive in um, from any grade level and grade band, then um, I don't know what will. So um, here is, is the next link um, that you will want to bookmark. And whoops. Let's see. This is the actual additional resources link um, that we put in the teacher's guide printable notebooks. And again, um, I love how they make everything PDFs and docs, but I wanted you to see who they've connected to. Um, again, 13, our PBS partner in New York City, um, has given lesson plan worksheets and printables and media worksheets, but then they have um, done a wonderful job of connecting to all of these other things. And so if you scroll down the page, you can go into other blogs and art galleries and um, the park service and libraries and here's the Library of Congress. Here's the song collections, eyewitness to the 18th century, spy letters for the American Revolution, and then here's a whole collection of books. So if you're wanting to go into nonfiction or fiction, here's a fantastic collection of books. So here's a reading list for fourth through ninth grade right here. So um, you could spend a lot of time on this website, but again, it's all aligned to national standards, national core. Um, if you are not one of those that, uh, states that are, have, are yet going to the national core, you can um, dig in and align it to your own state, but I would just um, encourage you to peruse that. And finally, for those of you who are wanting to know what's next, if you um, would like to look at Facebook, they are there too. So please friend them on Facebook, follow them on Facebook. Mission 2 is there. They are sharing with you that it will be related to the Underground Railroad. And they are um, already putting up how they're modeling um, and who they're modeling the characters after. And um, you can follow them and get all sorts of hints about the characters and what they will be developing. And the first cutting edge um, information about Mission 2 is there. So follow them on Facebook and get to know who's up and coming right there. So thank you, Joe, and thank you, Peggy and Kim and Classroom 2.0. Great. Thank you so much. Um, I jotted down a few questions. And um, do students, when you're setting up the student accounts, do they need email addresses in order to uh, complete their account? My kids that had um, email addresses at home just plug those in. Otherwise, they would just play at school. Um, they could set up an account and just do it web 
2.0. They could play it from any place. So if they had an email address, they used it. If they didn't, they could still access the site from wherever. And a throwaway email address is like um, student A at example.com. And example.com is a domain that will never be used, uh, similar to the 555 number in a movie. And you can set up those uh, throwaway email accounts if you need that just to uh, create a profile for student activities. And they, they should. The only problem is when you run into um, needing the, the password if that were the case. But you can write that down and, and generate different ways. Or you can use the Gmail um, address and filter that through using the plus sign on your email address, your Gmail account. And um, there's another question. How do you tweak the curriculum to make it work with fourth and fifth graders? Kim or Joe? How okay. Do you can you guys hear me now? Yes, we can. OK, my mic cut out for a minute. With the fourth graders, um, they were mostly focused on the vocabulary and just kind of the experience of actually playing. The fifth graders' assignments were a little bit higher level, um, especially at this, uh, the, the section of the Boston Massacre where they had to critically analyze what was happening between the British soldiers and the colonists. Um, so the adjustment was more in the assignment end of it as opposed to the actual game playing of it. It worked. And there was a lot of collaboration, even though the fourth graders didn't have quite as high of an outcome on the assignment as the fifth graders did. Everybody had a great time with it. And I think that's great. It would also de develop uh, the language skills, especially for those uh, new to the or um, second language learners. I think this would also be another fantastic activity. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close out the session. We want to be mindful of your time, but we do invite you to continue to stay on and continue to ask questions about this fantastic, fantastic um, learning activity. And we want to let you know that we will not have a show next Saturday due to the Easter holiday weekend and Good Friday and Passover. As well as on April 30th, there are two fantastic virtual conferences um, going on, so that uh, and so that you can support and attend either or both of those conferences. We have uh, canceled our show for that day, and we will return on May the 7th. One of those sessions is um, that Peggy will be facilitating, as well as I'm sure Kim and. Uh, Joe are going to be involved in is the ASTI, which is the Arizona um, ISTE affiliate. They're having their WOW Way Out West Virtual Technology Conference, and all of the this is on Saturday, April 30th. And you can register at ASTE.org/moodle and get more information about the the sessions. And um, the keynote is going to be Angela Myers and Stephen Farber. And it's just going to be fantastic um, sessions throughout the day. As well as the DEN Conference, Discovery Educator Network. They're having their spring virtual conference the same day, starting at 9 AM Eastern. And uh, there are great sessions, including Rushton Hurley and Porter Palmer, um, who have both been guests on our session here. They will also be presenting on the, the Discovery Day. And both virtual conferences also have, have some live events in different cities and so forth. So check out both of those resources at discoveryeducation.com or the axt.org slash Moodle uh, site for specifics on pre who's presenting and so forth. And these are the the upcoming interviews that Steve Hargadon will be conducting. On April the 19th, he'll be talking with David Shank. On April 20th, Ed Gregert. 
and on the 21st, Barry Schwartz, and the 26th, Hugh McGuire. And uh, these are all part of Steve's Future of Education uh, interview series. So we encourage you to check that out. And once you exit the session today, a survey will pop up and open automatically in your browser. And in some event, if for some reason it doesn't open, or you're watching one of the recordings and you'd like to request a development professional development certificate or give us feedback on the recordings, you can always access the survey by going to tinyurl.com slash CR20Live survey, all one word. And you can access those at any time, that survey, and give us feedback. And we hope that you will give us great feedback on today's session, as well as future guests and topics on future episodes of our webinar series. And we want to let you know that you can also, again, as I mentioned, request a professional development certificate. And uh, just input your name and email address on the survey. And Peggy will get those out to you shortly. Just give us a bit of time and we will get that processed for you. And Peggy's also helped us facilitate an iTunes U channel. And to directly open the iTunes U from the URL in your browser, you can go to tinyurl.com slash CR20Live iTunes U, all one word. CR20Live, iTunes U, and that will open directly in your browser so that you can subscribe to the entire chat log, the MP3 and the MP4 of each of our sessions, and take us with you wherever you go. And all of these resources are also in the live binders, and the live binders is the way that we're sharing and compiling resources during the show as well as after the show. Um, so we encourage you to check out all the resources from this show. And if you happen to miss it, you can always go back to this live binders and see all of the resources that were shared during each webinar. And we want to extend a very special thank you Today we didn't have closed captioning. Tammy was not with us today, but she will be uh, back with us next week as well as Lorna will be back. Um, not next week, May the 7th, sorry. And we want to extend a special thank you to Joe and Kimberly for joining us today as well as to Steve Argonaut, who is the founder of Classroom 2.0 and Future of Education, and especially a very special thank you to each of you for participating in today's session, and to Illuminate and Learn Central for providing this forum for us to meet each and every week. And so now we're going to go ahead and pass it back to our special guests. And if you have a question that hasn't been addressed, we invite you to take the mic, and you can always put your questions in the chat. And Wendy, you have the mic. You activate your mic by clicking on the top button in the bottom left. Hi, this is my first time I ever did a webinar on Classroom 2.0. I really enjoyed it. I just want to know if we can just paste the link in our, um, like on our web page for our mission. You mean, yes, you can certainly share the link. I'm going to turn your mic off for a second, Wendy. You can certainly share the link to Mission US and, and post it on any website or sharing the, the resource with uh, your colleagues, most definitely you're welcome to do that as well as, as, well as um, sharing our links from the show as well. Thank you for asking that question, Wendy. And are there any other questions that I might have missed?
let me go ahead and um, scroll back. This is the, the website that you can find out more information about the individual missions. And they post Kim and then posted their um, their info in the chat. And there there's only one mission so far. The second one is coming in the fall, and it's going to have to do with uh, the Underground Railroad. And I don't know that the third and fourth missions have been developed or um, been talked about yet. But I know they will be fantastic, um, as this one is, and I'm really excited about exploring this uh, for myself and recommending this to uh, my colleagues. Yeah, so, we don't Kim, have... If you want to post your information in the chat again, your contact, that would be great. Go ahead. Yeah, no news beyond what's available um, with Mission 2, and Mission 2 is related to the Underground Railroad. So I'm just assuming that they'll work their way through U.S. history as funding becomes available. So that's all we know. I would just suggest that you follow them on Facebook, and we're just rooting them on. We think it's a great project, and um, I think they've been blown away by how supportive and how successful um, this has been um, received. I think they just couldn't believe how thrilled teachers were with this. and. Um, the response from classroom teachers as well as students, um, the response and the emails and everything that they've gotten, you know, they piloted this. We were one of 13 states that had an outreach grant to um, do trainings throughout the state and then also select um, and run a contest where we were able to select a teacher of the year in our state. Um, and then Joe went on to, you know, we, we were able to send Joe's resources on so that she competed nationally um, to be a National Teacher of the Year. Um, but it was just amazing, and I think they just could not believe the outpouring of support for this product. So with that, we're hoping that they'll get some big funding to make lots of missions. Definitely, and that funding is the, the key factor, I'm sure, into developing future sessions and um, future missions. And somebody and asked I, for the uh, Denver, the Spring Virtual Conference League uh, registration link, and I posted that in the chat. And I saw Joe's question about training on Mission 2. Um, the word that we just got from New York was that the grants for Mission 2 will not go to the stations that got grants for Mission 1. So um, we'll be able to um, create trainings around Mission 2 ourselves, but we'll have to search for our own funding, which um, we're always good about being creative for grants. I know, but we can, uh, we'll just, do some searching, so um, just keep your eye out for Mission 2 as it becomes available. And then um, Peggy asked about what's different about adventure games. Um, Peggy, are you wondering like what's different about this compared to other kinds of games? Um, I would say that this game was um, truly created you know, when it first came out, we felt like it kind of had a look and feel of Liberty Kids, if you remember that series a long time ago that was on PBS. And um, at first it seemed a little bit simplistic, but um, the more you get into it, the more you realize that it isn't simplistic. It's actually pretty complex, and that as you watch it, it is like a broadcast television show. It's just that it, it has you stop and it, it has a feel. It, I used to do a lot of um, with my students when I was in the classroom of reading those choose your own adventure books. And that's what it reminds me of because as you're, as you're watching it, it has you stop and, and create um, different choices, and as you d choose those different choices, then um, you're you're clicking on different things within the broadcast 
see now I'm using that term broadcast, but it isn't. But you're clicking on different things within the game screen and making different choices. And from that then, different actions happen that then choose different video selections and it makes different things happen. So you actually end up having different outcomes which have different videos occur within the game. And it, it truly does cause different things to happen. Um, so yeah, it is. It's, it's like the Choose Your Own Adventure books, but it's video based. Um, and so I guess that's the best way to describe it. And, and Joe could probably give you more details but it, it really is like that. And then it embeds the primary sources that they can apply. Most definitely. And I think it's a very robust and well-rounded activity to use with students. Um, whether you're teaching American history content or sharing this with your colleagues about web tools that they can use in the classroom. Um, they use different types of decision-making web, web quests and learning activities will definitely be an added and needed supplement to any curriculum. And I love that you can continue to play it and make different decisions and choices, kind of changing up the game. and exploring and learning about different things each time that you play it. And it looks like we're kind of winding down on the, uh, the, the, co the questions. And Kim and Joe, do you have like a final comment or um, anecdote you'd like to share about Mission U.S.? I would just share that I think the power of it also is that then it's coupled with the primary sources and it, it takes it back to the power of the teacher because it, you know, it isn't all that without the power of the debates and the activities that is led by the teacher. And so it's not meant to just be something that the student does by himself or herself. It's meant to be teacher led. And so um, it's not just a plug-and-play teacher by himself or herself. So um, it goes back to being done with a teacher, and that's the power of it all. So thank you so much. And I can definitely see the importance of pre- and post-activities um, prior to and after the game and all the different conversations. And you can definitely uh, spark students reading interests about um, historical fiction and, and different non-fiction uh, activities and aspects related to this game environment. And we want to, um, again, thank everybody who joined us today and to let you know that on May the 7th, we will be back and on our regular schedule at 12 p.m. Eastern. And we hope that we will see you online back on May 7th, as well as at the two virtual conferences on, on April 30th. And have a great Easter holiday. And take care. Thank you for joining us today. Recording stopped.